Lord God, you are so good. And we've come here this morning because we need you. We're seeking your face. We want to know you more. And so, God, we pray that you'd be speaking to each of us. Lord, we pray, that you'd, we pray for the person on our right, that you'd be speaking to him or her, and that you'd be opening um, their eyes to what you're doing in their midst. Lord, that you'd be opening their eyes to their own heart. We pray for the person on our left, that you'd be speaking to him or her as well, and that, that Father, that they would have revelation from you that they would hear a word directly from you, either from from your word or from the testimonies afterwards or whatever it is that you're doing, Lord, that their eyes and ears would be open. And Lord, most importantly, we pray for ourselves because we need you, God. God, we need to hear from you. We need you. So Jesus, move in our midst. We pray right now that your spirit would fill this place to overflowing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our message this morning is why you shouldn't go to church. Yes. Why shouldn't you go to church? Why should you go to church? Now, it's it's kind of a weird message because people go to church for a lot of different reasons. The problem is people have misconceptions about what the church is. The church, of course, we just said, is not a building. This is not the church. Church is not a service time. It's not not, not, not what church is. Church is not an organization. It's none of those. The church, it's the assembly of God's people. It's when the assembly of God's people come together, together, that is what's called church. So this message is not about why you should stop going to church, but this message is about the motivation for why you go to church. See, why you shouldn't go to church, there's going to be a lot of reasons why you shouldn't, there's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't. And we're going to be talking about both. Hebrews 9.24, or 10.24 says, Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. See, that verse right there tells us that we're supposed to gather together. We're not supposed to give up meeting together. There's a lot of people in the church today that say, You know what? I can, do, I can be a Christian without going to church. And, and, and I can appreciate that, but you can't be a growing Christian. You can't be really part of the body of Christ because the body of Christ is when we gather. And we're going to be talking about that. In fact, 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Spirit of God dwells in you. You are the temple of God. Now, we often take that verse and we personalize it, but really that verse says, you, plural, are the temple of God. And so when we gather together, we become the temple of God together, gather together, that is the church. Well, today, our world today beats up the church for a lot of reasons. Well, you know, the church is a bunch of hypocrites. Well, the church is this. The church is apostate. The church is that. On this next screen, we've really, this is what way we treated the church. We battered the church. She's a battered bride. Not because Jesus beat her up, but because we beat ourselves up. And we give lots of reasons why you shouldn't go to church. And, and you're here, so you, you obviously have gotten over some of those reasons. Or maybe you're coming back for the first time and you're just trying, testing it out, having been burned or hurt in the past. And, and God knows that. You're here for a reason. God has a purpose for why you're here today. He wants to speak to you. But we're not here to beat up on the church. But we are here to talk about motivation. What is your motivation for going to church? What's your primary motivation for going to church? Look on this next screen. What is your primary motivation for going to church? I want to get a little, I want to get a little feedback from you, so I want to have a little survey. Okay? So this is the one time, this is probably the first time and maybe the only time at Reveal where we ask you to pull out the cell phone, and I want you to vote in terms of your personal heart. Why do you come? Why are you here today? And so what you're going to do is you're going to, the, the phone number that you're going to text for this vote is phone number 650-600-9016. Okay, so if you send a text to that number, and then your vote is based on these uh, other codes here. So if your vote is, hey, I like the music. That's why I I come to Reveal, because we got a great worship team where the music is just like, I just, wow, I'm just, I see Jesus. Okay, so if that's the reason that you're here, then that's your vote, 90947. 
If you come because you like the teaching, wow, you just feel like you, you just know God better. And it's, it's just all about, wow, I, the teaching, I get, my head gets so, I feel like I'm going to explode because I learned so much. That's your code. I feel good when I go. You know, if you came because I feel make, church makes me feel good, that's why I come to church. Or you feel like you want to gain wisdom and insight. I want to get smarter. I really, I, I need, I've got some trials in my life, and I think, I think God has the answers. If that's why you're coming, write that, do, put that code. If you, feel, if you come because you feel loved and accepted, this is like a church that's so loving, and I just come because I feel so loved. That's why I come. That's my primary reason. If that's your primary reason, that code. Or you come because you want to network. You know, i got to connect with people, and I'm building my business. And if that's you, and you want to build your business, and you think that you're coming to church, that's your primary reason? That's your code, 90952. Or if you come because you want to experience the presence of God, 90953. Or maybe you were promised lunch afterward, and that's why you're here. <laughs> okay? Maybe, and and if maybe you weren't promised lunch, but maybe you were dragged here by your mom or your dad, by your son or your daughter. You were dragged here. That would be your code, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm here under compulsion. I'm here because I have to be here, 90954, Okay? Or I'm searching for meaning in life. Maybe you're, you're just not sure about this whole Christian thing. You're just kind of, you're trying to find some answers. I don't understand. 90955, or you need help, 90956. Or you know what? Hey, I am come for all of those reasons. Now, if you come for all those reasons, recognize that are all those reasons yours? Did you come to network? Because maybe not you didn't come to network, but you maybe came for some of the others. I want you to mark down your primary reason. And I want you to send that text, and they're tallying it right now. Send that text. If you haven't sent it yet, send it right now because you get your vote in. Here's your one chance. You get to say something at Reveal and get your vote in. I mean, obviously, at Reveal, we have an open mic oftentimes to, to share testimonies and praise reports. Today, we didn't have the time to do that. But here's your chance to have an impact on why you come to church. Okay? Polls close in 30 seconds. All right? Get your vote in. Going... Going, gone. Okay, they're going to work in the back there, and they're going to take the t tally here. All right. So, motivation. Oh, yeah, there you go. Most of you came because you want to experience the presence of God. Over 40% of you that voted, a bunch of you were, were shy and didn't vote, I saw, but... 40% of you said, I came to experience the presence of God. Okay, cool. We're going to talk about that. Um, look at that. About 15% of you said, I came because of all those reasons. Okay. Some people said, I came. 20% said, I came because I want to gain wisdom, insight. I came because I want to know something new. I want to learn. All right. Some good reasons. Some good reasons. Are those reasons that you should go to church? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Motivation determines everything. If you come for the wrong motives, when things change at church, you may be disappointed, discouraged, or disgruntled. So, if you came because your boyfriend or girlfriend was coming to church, and then you stopped dating your boyfriend or girlfriend, you ain't coming back to church, unless your motivation has changed. I know some of you actually, that's how you got saved. You came because of boyfriend or girlfriend, God caught a hold of your heart, and then all of a sudden your motivation has now changed and you're here for a different reason, so you keep coming back, even though you may have broken off that relationship. But what's your motivation? Wrong motives, if they're not changed, you will eventually leave the church, and you may even walk away from God because of it. So let's, take about, let's talk about the reasons you should not go to church. Ready? Number one, you shouldn't go to church because of the music. Sorry, folks. Those of you that put that, but we have such a great worship band. I just love the music. Yeah, but what if the music changes? I mean, this today, it was Allie leading instead of Pastor Dave. Oh, I love it when Pastor Dave leads. He's, he's great. Well, what about Allie? Well, she's, she's good too, but I like Pastor Dave better. Really? Is that why you come? Because it's not about the music. You know, last night, Allie was leading worship, and um, I, I, I previously, several years ago, I, I was a lead pastor at a church, and Allie happened to pick a, a song set 
for the songs last night were like all my favorite songs. She and I hadn't talked, but she picked all these, all my favorite songs. And I was like, oh, this is great. Oh, I love this song. Oh, I love, oh, I love this song. And the focus was, I love this song, not I love Jesus. It was all about me. And I was loving the worship. Why? Because of me, instead of, instead of God. My focus was wrong. And so often, most people, honestly, you know, I, if, you, if you go back, at least for me, remember when my wife and I were looking for churches 20 years ago, um, and we're like, it always felt like you had to compromise. You either go, went to a church that had good teaching or had good worship, and it was really hard to find a church that had both. And those, that was the motivation. I'm trying to find a church that has good teaching and good worship, and if it has those, that's why I go to church. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Don't go to church for the music. You also shouldn't go to church because of the teaching or to gain wisdom and insight. I know what 20% of you said that, but you shouldn't go to the church to gain wisdom and insight. Why is that? Because 1 Corinthians 8.1 tells us that knowledge puffs up. Knowledge puffs up. See, our heads are like this balloon, right? And when we get knowledge... I love the sound effects. Are you getting nervous? My face is closer. Now, knowledge puffs up. And what happens is the more knowledge I get, my head gets bigger. On this, next screen, on this screen here, you see it. Um, this, this actually, this, this is a church in Antarctica. And so a weather balloon in Antarctica didn't happen, okay? In case you're wondering. But a weather balloon happens because you fill it with lots of air and you fill it with not with just regular air, with hot air, right? And the heat causes it to lift up. What happens with knowledge is it puffs up our heads. And then if it's hot air, which is what most of us are full of, it, it, it puffs us up and makes us feel better than we ought. We consider ourselves higher than our others instead of considering others higher than ourselves. We, can, we look down on others because <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I know better. Knowledge puffs up. In fact, look at um, Acts 17, 21. Paul, when he was preaching to the Athenians, and we, we hear a little uh, chide here from Luke here in uh, Acts 17, 21. It says, For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. It's so often, when you leave church, when you leave the service, is your evaluation of how the service was by if you learned something new. Oh, it was, it was good service. I, I, I learned this. It was a good service because, uh, you know, God spoke to me, and, and so I, I heard this, and, and I know this, and I can't tell you how many times I thought, it was a good service because I learned something. My head got bigger. My head got bigger. Is that really what it's supposed to be about? No, actually, it's supposed to be just the opposite. It's supposed to be, we actually find transformation when our head gets smaller and our hearts get bigger. 2 Timothy 4.3, the net translation, New English translation, for there will be a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. Instead, following their own desires, they will accumulate teachers for themselves because they have an insatiable curiosity to hear new things. How many times have you left church and said, ah, that was nothing new? That means your standard of church was hearing something new. That means your standard of church was like the false teachers in the last days. What's your focus? What's your focus? What's your motivation for church? See, when I was the senior pastor of a church, I believed that if I gave people information, they would experience transformation. Information leads to transformation. It doesn't work that way. Um, last night we looked at uh, the, that King David and the fact that he wrote these incredible psalms, Psalm 34 and Psalm 56, and he wrote these psalms while he was captured by the Philistines, and then he, in order to escape, he pretends like he's crazy. So he knows the truth, and yet he, out of fear, doesn't walk the truth. How many of you have done that? You know the right thing to do, but then you find yourself doing the wrong thing. So information, just knowing the right answer doesn't lead to transformation. You think about how many you know, wives, you, you, you sit there and you listen to your husband on, on you know, football playoffs, and they, 
your husband knows all about why that coach is wrong and how they're messing up, and, and they can tell you. They've got the answers. They know all the right things, and they know how to coach, but they don't know how to do it themselves. We, we do. As Christians, we do the same thing. We know all the right answers, and we know what to do. We know how to apply it to our lives. We just don't walk it out. We don't. We need to actually humble ourselves. And how do we humble ourselves? We have to let the air out. We have to say, humble yourselves in the sight of God, and in due time, he will lift you up. See, most Christians come to church like this. They come to church, and they put on their bib, and they say, Feed me, Pastor. My, this is my two-year-old, and that's she, my two-year-old. She's a little bit heavy, and, and, and her, she's a foster child, and, and as soon as she wakes up, she says, I'm hungry, Daddy. And most Christians walk through the door, and they're like, feed me. And they're like, and when we leave, oh, I, I felt, I, I've been fed. We talk about that. Feed me, feed me, feed me. The problem is, when we get fed, we get big, heart, we get big heads and little hearts. We get fat heads and little hearts. Most Christians are educated far beyond their level of obedience. We know so much more than we, what we apply or what we walk out. So if your standard for church, if your reason for coming to church is to get smarter, is to hear something new, is to get wisdom, it's the wrong reason. You shouldn't go to church for that reason. When, I, when we merged our church here with Reveal, I, I was hearing Pastor Dave teaching, and I knew Pastor Dave, I've known him for 20 years, okay? And I heard his messages when he was 25, he was a young pastor, but he was a gifted teacher, and his, his messages were deep, and I loved it because I wanted a big head, okay? I didn't know that I wanted a big head, but I just kind of, that was what I was drawn to, is the big head, and, and, and knowing lots of scripture, and knowing things, and so Pastor Dave gave messages that were, man, I learned so much. And yet, when we he came here, his messages had changed 20 years later. And it, it didn't seem like he was going as deep. But I wasn't getting it. He wasn't going for the head. He was going for the heart. Because if you, if you go for the heart, you'll get both. If you go for the head, you get puffed up with pride. And that's what was going on. And I, re I, and I recognize that. And what we, hear, we see this actually in Malachi 4.6. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. The ministry of John the Baptist was to turn the heart, not the head, not to make the people smarter, but to turn their hearts back to God. It's about the heart issue. So if you came here to find, hear something new, to learn something, to get wisdom, that's not the answer. You shouldn't go to church to learn something new or become wiser. Third reason you shouldn't go to church is out of guilt. Some of you may be here today because you're like, if I don't go to church, I just feel like I'm, God's going to clobber me. If I don't go to church, I'm not going to get that promotion. If I don't go to church, or maybe you have that Catholic guilt or Jewish guilt or whatever kind of guilt that's been in your life, and you just feel like you've got to go to church for those reasons. Mom always said, if I don't go to church, that's guilt. That's legalism. Legalism. Legalism is trying to control God. God, if I do this, you owe me. If I go to church, then you owe me. <laughs> Does that sound like the reason to go to church? I don't think you can control God. But we try to earn his favor. We try to win his favor by doing those things. It's not the reason to go to church. You also shouldn't go to church because it makes you feel good. Um, 1 Timothy 4.3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled to feel good. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. If your motivation is to feel good, you could be led to a different church that tickles your ears and makes you feel good, but your motivation is wrong. I mean, we could, you know what, we could do all sorts of things. We could have a church that everybody that comes in gets $10. And if you bring two people next week, we'll give you $10 more. And if you bring them, and, and we create this pyramid scheme of, of $10 things, and we'll do the $10 tithe thing, and... And everybody's like, I like this, you know, I get my Starbucks card, I'll, 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 get, or I'll get my $10, and the motivation there is, I feel good. No. Or, or, you know, whatever thing makes you feel good, if it's about you, that's not what church is about. Church is not about you. I love this quote from John Piper. 
and it says here, God is most glorified when we are most satisfied in him. In other words, if you are seeking him, if you're seeking God, if you're seeking Jesus, the result is you will feel good. But if you're seeking to feel good, you've, you've got them in the wrong order. You've got to seek him, and as a result, you'll feel good. But if you seek feeling good, you'll miss him. And much of the church has missed him. Well, fifth reason you shouldn't go to church is to feel loved. Well, I mean, when you go to church, you should feel loved, but that shouldn't be your motivation. If you're coming because I just feel so much love there, I just feel so much love at, at, at Reveal, it's just such a friendly, I mean, I, mean I, I can't walk through the door and I get three hugs. Well, that's, we, we, we want that, but what happens when you only get one hug? It's not as much love in your church. It's a cold church. In fact, I didn't get any hugs. Nobody talked to me. Did the church change? You may be changed. This church that you see here is actually in Antarctica. It has to be the coldest church on the planet. Okay? It is. It's the coldest church on the planet. I mean, it's sub-zero most of the year. Okay. Now, it's this little church that seats 30 people, and it's a Russian Orthodox church. Okay, But it's an it's amazing little uh, thing. I mean, I, I just love the picture because it's, it's literally... it's. This, southernmost you know one of the southernmost points in the world and the 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 furthest the church the furthest south um and you know they mainly minister to uh, penguins um (laughs) they but the the church if you were to go in there they don't see many people and so you're going to be welcomed you're going to be loved regardless of denominational stuff because they're there to to minister to people that's just they don't get many people Cold church, if you came to church because you felt loved and that was your main purpose, there will come a time where you don't feel loved. What about when you get disciplined? What about when you get challenged? I didn't like that. You know, it's funny because people, a lot of people say they love to come to Reveal because they get challenged and and they feel like, you know, I'm not being told what I want to hear, but I'm being told what I need to hear, which which is funny. I mean, it's not funny. It's great. But here's the problem. Until it goes too far until you challenge me out of my area that I don't want to go. And then I'm, I'm not going to that church anymore. There. And so if your reason to come into church is because you feel enlightened, you feel smarter, you feel challenged, you feel loved, and those things go away, do you leave church? If that was your reason, yeah, you will. You will. And it doesn't mean that the church changed. It means that your motivation was wrong and you changed. What was going on with you? Oh, certainly, there are things that we can do as a body of Christ that we, we, we do things wrong. Okay, we make mistakes. I'm not saying that we don't make mistakes and that we don't change. There are things that, as a church, we are growing and evolving and, and um, going through a maturing process, and sometimes we do things right, sometimes we get it wrong. But ultimately, what's your motivation? You shouldn't go to church to feel loved. Sixth reason, you shouldn't go to church to network. I I know many people who came, who got saved at an Amway convention, okay? Praise the Lord for Amway and people getting saved. The problem is, a lot of times they get saved and then their upline tells them, now, you go find a good church and you can go share this with Amway, with all all, all those people at that church. And all of a sudden, you're looking at dollars, you're looking at people as dollar signs. That's the wrong reason to go to church. That's not why you come to church. We don't go to church to network. We don't go to church to build our business. You shouldn't go to church to, to, for that reason. Number seven, you shouldn't go to church to experience the presence of God. Uh-oh. This is going to be controversial, I know. Some of you may disagree with me, and that's fine. You can be wrong. But, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding, okay? But if you go to church primarily to experience something, the motivation is you. And if you don't experience it anymore, does that mean that the church changed? No, it could mean that you're just in sin. It could just mean that you've hardened your heart to things and and you're wrestling with God and and you don't like what you've been told by the the Holy Spirit. And so you go to church and there's there's just something between me and Pastor Dave or me and Pastor Ty or me and Pastor Jacob or me and this first person. And all of a sudden, you go to church and you're not feeling it anymore. You don't experience the presence of God. And so you begin to say, I'm going to check out another church. 
You were coming for an experience instead of a person. If you're coming to church for an experience, to experience the presence of God, now there's a challenge. Sometimes we use the presence of God as a, as a phrase to refer to God. But if you're really coming for that experience, you're talking about feelings again. And that's going to lead you astray. There's going to come a time where you don't experience it. Will you continue to come? Psalm 1611 says, In your presence is fullness of joy. Yes. And where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Praise God for that. But my motivation is not for an experience. My motivation needs to be for a person. So why should you go to church? Well, I've already kind of tipped my hat there. 1 Corinthians 2, 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That, look at that verse 2. I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The number one reason you should go to church, to know Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's why we go to church, is to know Jesus. Now, we know, okay, I know about Jesus, and, and I wanna, sometimes we, we fill our head with stuff about Jesus and think that we've experienced church or that we've gone to church. But really, church is about knowing him personally. You can know about Abraham Lincoln, but do you know him personally? No. But you can know Jesus personally. And it says to know him crucified, that's really speaking of the gospel. We need to understand the gospel. We need to understand how far we've fallen and our sin. And we need to understand the fact that we can't do this walk on our own. The fact that we need Jesus. We need his, his presence. We need his power. John 17, 3, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. So my goal in teaching, and I don't always get this right, I don't always communicate right, but my goal in teaching is that you would leave here knowing, it, my goal is not that you would leave here knowing something, but knowing someone. That's the goal. That's really the goal of all preaching. It should be, not that you know something, and, and I get hung up on this because I like to know stuff. I like, I like learning. But really, it should all point to Jesus. Sometimes people after a message, they'll say, oh, pastor, I just, I, you know, I, I really got a lot out of that. I got a lot out of that. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. But then I start thinking, did they learn a lot? Was that the goal? Or did they know Jesus more? Ah, maybe I messed up. Philippians 3 also tells us more. Philippians 3, 7 through 14. This is such a power-packed passage that I encourage you to memorize it. I know it's eight verses, but you know what? It's worth the time. Here's, here we go. Let's dive into this. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, dung, garbage. I count it all loss, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Verse 10, key verse. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Wow. Verse 10. That I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. That's the purpose. That's it that I may know him. We already said that was the number one reason. Number two reason is that I may know the power of his resurrection. If, I, if I'm not knowing his power, if I'm not coming to know his power, to know him personally and what he can do in my life, and I'm coming to think and to fill my head, what happens is if I fill my head, I think that I can do this. But if I'm filling my heart, I recognize I can't do this and I need God's power. If I'm coming for that reason, then the result is my head gets smaller because I'm realizing how great he is and how much smaller I am and then his power flows through me. Instead of me getting my big head thinking that I can figure this thing out, I can do this. If I just worked harder, tried harder, then I can do this Christian walk. You can't. We are saved by grace, and we are maintained and sustained by grace. You should go to church to know the power of his resurrection. Number three, you should go to church to know the fellowship of his sufferings. We want to know the fellowship, 
But there's something about coming to church and the fellowship of the sufferings means as I go and I share what God's doing in my heart and, I, and then the, the struggles that I have, what happens is somehow by me sharing with somebody what's going on with me, my struggles are lighter. But theirs, they may be a little bit heavier in the sense of, oh, I feel bad for you. But it's not like they carry the whole weight. Instead, they, they carry a little bit of the weight, but the result is my weight is lifted because I'm sharing the fellowship of the sufferings. But it's also the fellowship of the sufferings of Christ and his sufferings. What does that mean? It means we go to church to, to sometimes get stretched and bent out of shape because the shape that we're in is not the shape of Jesus. And we get bent out of shape. You know, in the church, there are, there are EGRs. You know what EGRs are? Extra grace required. Okay, Those are people that just rub you the wrong way. You know, those are the people that when you see them coming, I'm like, okay, I'm busy. I'm reading the word. I'm reading the word. I'm reading the word. I'm reading the word. Come on, come on. Okay. Okay, now I can go. And yet those are the people that God wants to use to change you, to get you to ah, stretch out of your comfort zone, to love them like Jesus loved them. And, and you know, it's funny because um, we all have those people that just kind of rub us the wrong way or I just, I don't like hanging out with them. Well, so you get to hang out with them in heaven. Now, granted, heaven's a big place, and you can be a long ways away. But, but here on earth, the fellowship of his sufferings is recognizing, you know what, I need to love that person just like Jesus loved him. And so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take an extra minute here and, and be real and honest with this person and not just try to cut him off and go. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes we don't realize that we're the person that's the EGR. We're the EGR. How do you know if you're an EGR? You're all EGRs. You all are. We all are. There's somebody in here that you rubbed the wrong way. You looked at the wrong way. You know, you, you just, you, you said something and they took it the wrong way. And all of a sudden people are, and the whole point is, are you coming to church to be offended? Are you coming to church to look for a reason to leave? If you're coming to church to look for a reason to leave, you're going to leave. But if you're coming to church because you want to know Christ, you're also going to know the fellowship of his sufferings. You're going to know that ah, there's some bumps along the road. There's some bumps in me that need to be worked out. Number four, you should go to church to be conformed to his death, sanctification, becoming more like Jesus. That was what he, he says there in, um, in the Philippians, being conformed to his death. That's why we go to church, to become more like Jesus. That's why we come. That's why we should come. may not be the reason we come, but that's why we should come. Hebrews 10, 23 also says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. That stir up love, it means to irritate one another to love. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to irritate one another to serve one another. That's why we should come to church. Now, some of you come to church because I want to serve. That wasn't one of the options that I had on the, on the little poll there. Uh, it should have been. But that's to, just to serve is the wrong reason. Because what if you can't serve anymore? That's not the right reason. You come to know Christ. That's why we come. We come to know the power of his resurrection. We come to know the fellowship of his sufferings. We come to be conformed to his death. And we come to stir up love in the body and good works in others. And number six, you should go to church because God says so. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Not forsaking the assembly. The assembly is not just two people getting together. Sometimes, oh, I meet with my accountability partner. That's church. Or, I, I, I watch on TV, and, and I watch Joel on TV, and it's church. That ain't church. Church is the assembly together. And, and, and why is that? Well, 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. If we come to know Christ and the church is the body of Christ, the only way you get to know Christ is by knowing his body. You know, okay, I gotta be careful where I go with this. Um, if when I was dating my wife i didn't want to just know her intellectually okay be honest i didn't want to just know her intellectually i wanted to know all about her 
I wanted to know her body and her mind and, and everything about her. And yet somehow in the church, we did, I don't want to know the body of Christ. They rub me the wrong way. It's too much work. It's too much trouble. I just want to know Jesus. Hey, I have, First John tells me that I have no need for anyone to teach me. It's just me and Jesus, and we're good. And you're missing out on the body of Christ. You're missing out on experiencing Christ. You're missing out on knowing Christ. You can't know Christ without knowing his body. You can't know Christ without knowing his bride, the church. You can't. You can't. That's what God created it. In Genesis, before the fall, before sin entered the world, God said it is not good for man or woman to be alone. It's not good for you to be alone. Now, you're here, so you're not alone, but there's going to come a time, there's going to come a temptation when something rubs you the wrong way and your motivation for church is exposed, and you decide, I'm out of here. I've got to find another church that tells me what I want to hear, that feeds my soul, that I experience the presence of God, or you fill in any of those gaps, the reasons why we shouldn't go to church, and you make that your motivation. You're going to find another church that does it for a season, but eventually that, that motivation will expose itself again as that motivation is stripped away because God doesn't want you to come for an experience. God wants you to come for himself. You're not going to be satisfied until you're satisfied in him alone, in him alone. So, Wrapping up, personal application. Personal application. What's your motive for coming to church? And how do you know what your motive is? Here you've got a whole bunch of reasons. Okay, look at the list below. Identify those things that if they changed, you would feel uncomfortable attending Reveal Church or consider leaving because something changed. Right, let's just walk through these. Okay, walk with me. Don't read them all. Just walk with me here. Music. If the music changed and we started doing country western music, would you leave? Some people are out the door. Some people are like, I'm in. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> now, that's the wrong reason. Remember, if you're coming for the music, you're coming for the wrong reason. The music's not about how it makes you feel. It's about worshiping God. That's what the music's about. Teaching. If you're coming for the teaching... And what if Pastor Dave decides that every week we're going to break into small groups? And every, you know, if you were here a few weeks ago when he, he did like a little 15-minute devotion, he said, you know what we need to do today is we need to break in groups of, you know, five or six, seven, and then just you're going to share prayer requests and pray for one another. And that's church. And you're like, there's no teaching? What kind of church is that? If you came, that reveals your, that reveals your heart. You were coming to get a big head. No, no, I wasn't. No. Yeah, you were. Ty, you're scaring me. Are you going to do that? Are you going to, like, every week do the, like, small group thing? No, we're going to go as the Lord leads. But we come because we're coming to know Jesus, and whatever's going to help us to know Jesus is what we're going to do. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. It's out of my comfort zone because of my expectations, my motivations for church. Are you coming because of the service time? It fits my schedule. You know, I like this, this 11.15 serve time. Is I can sleep in on Sunday mornings. What if we said, you know what, we're going to go to a one service at 9 o'clock and we're going to stack people on each other's laps? <laughs> you get closer to one another. <laughs> but, you know, but I don't know what we're going to do. But is the service time really the deciding factor? Well, I just, it's uncomfortable. Like some of you, I like to serve, like some of you come at the 9 o'clock service and you like to serve at 11.15 or vice versa. Okay, praise the Lord. But what if we change that and like, well, we really need some help serving at the 9 o'clock or, you know, um, at the 11 o'clock service, and so we want you to attend the 9 o'clock. Oh, I don't like, what's your motivation? Is your motivation, um, you know, based on the fact that we do a, if you, service length is a funny one here because service length can't be your motivation for coming to Reveal because nobody knows what time we're going to end. <laughs> it's never the same two weeks in a row, okay? So that can't be your motivation. Um, feeling encouraged, is that your motivation? You come because I just feel encouraged. And so what happens when you come and you feel beat up? Are you going to leave? A lot of people do. Sometimes we need to kind of, ouch. But that's, sometimes that's what we need. You come because you feel good. Oh, man, I just feel everything. I just feel good. I just feel the love, and I just feel good. If that's your motivation. There's a time where God's going to strip that away and test you. What's, your, what's in your heart? If that's what you're coming for, that becomes an idol, and God will not have any idols in his church. He will pull those idols right out from under you. You come because we have a wide screen. It's actually getting wider. Um, some of you are like, oh, really? Is that your motivation? Is your motivation the children's ministry? What if we change the children's ministry? What if we brought all the kids in 
and so that we had babies sitting next to you. Some of you love babies, that's cool. But a four-year-old, uh, uh, uh. mom, would you change? Oh, I just, I, mm. What if motivation is Jesus Christ and we change Jesus Christ? If we change Jesus Christ, you should be out. You should leave, go. Okay? But here's the deal. We're not going to change Jesus Christ. You know that he's not changing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But here's what does happen. We change doing something else, and you tag that as we're changing Jesus. People do that all the time. They leave a church. They just don't, you know, yeah, they say Jesus is the senior pastor, but they haven't been praying in, in, in months. Or, or something happens, and, and you just begin to, I, I don't like that. I don't think Jesus is the center anymore. Really? Really? We've got to know the hearts. Got to know the hearts of the pastor, the leadership. Where, where, where are we going? Yes, if Jesus Christ changes or Jesus Christ is no longer the senior pastor, you should leave because Jesus Christ, we say, and we don't just say it, we really believe it and we try to seek that so that Jesus Christ is the senior pastor and the Holy Spirit is the worship leader. He's the only senior pastor, Jesus. The color of the sanctuary walls. You know there's church splits over that? <laughs> color of the, the carpet or the sanctuary walls. If that's your reason, oh, I, I like the color. Well, here's the reason I bring that up. We're doing a remodel. <laughs> when you come back in two weeks, these walls are going to be different. Very different. And you may come in and you're like, I don't like it. Okay, what's your motivation for coming to church? Yeah, but why, why do you have to change things? Is it about you? Is it about how you feel? No. No. The size of the congregation. What if the congregation gets larger? What if the congregation's smaller? What if persecution happens and our church goes from whatever size we are now to just 50 people gathered together? Wow, it's just not the same anymore. We don't have the electric guitars anymore. We don't have all that fancy stuff anymore. In fact, we're meeting in homes now because we've been kicked out. We've lost our tax-exempt status because we were preaching the truth and, and, and the church gets smaller. And are you going to leave the church too? Free food after the service. Now, it's like, well, I, I like the free food. What if we started charging for it? You wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, what's your motivation? Why are you coming to church? Well, you know, it's a good snack. I mean, like, after, after you know, it's, Pastor Dave teaches a long time, and I need that free bagel. I mean, I can't afford to do a bagel. Somebody has to pay for those bagels, okay? Now, thankfully, we do get a lot of that food donated, but not all of it, and there's a lot of you know, the cream cheese and all that stuff. None of that, the cream cheese isn't donated. The coffee's not donated. The, all that stuff, the church pays for. So what if we did start charging? We're not planning on charging, but would, you, would that change your heart? It shows your motivation. Experiencing the presence of God, if that changed, would you leave the church? Remember, experiencing the presence of God is partly on you. I've been to churches where I, I see people and they're just experiencing the presence of God. And I'm like, I'm kind of feeling out. I'm just left out. I'm just like, and what was going on? It was my heart. It was my heart. In fact, usually what happens, what happens is there's a little something that happens between you and the pastor or you and the leadership or you and somebody else. And there's this thing that's going on. And God says, sit on it, right? God says, just sit on it. Just don't worry about it. No, God says, leave your gift at the altar and go make reconciliation between you and that other person. Because what's happening is that hardness of heart is keeping you from experiencing the presence of God. So if, if you stop experiencing the presence of God, it doesn't mean that God's not here. It means that you've moved away, that you've hardened your heart. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And finally, if we started using bagpipes on Sunday morning, would you leave the church? <laughs> that one's questionable. I mean... I'm not a bagpipe fan, so, and, I, and I, I know Pastor Dave's not, so we don't have to worry about that. But if one Sunday you heard, you, you would just say, okay, Lord, this too will pass. <laughs> What's your motivation? I want you to think about that. What, is there anything at Reveal that if we took away or God took away, that would make you say, mm. because if there is, and it's not Jesus, your motivation's wrong. Let's pray. Lord God, 
We have come here to know you, to know you more. And yet, Lord, we do come with mixed motives. We come because we're expecting a feeling. We're expecting a change. But ultimately, Lord, really all we need is you. All we need is you. God, may you search our hearts right now. Search inside our deepest, innermost being and, and, and root out those things in us where we're trying to be, find satisfaction in something other than yourself. We're trying to find satisfaction in a feeling. We're trying to find satisfaction in, in the favorite songs. Even trying to find satisfaction in an experience. God, we want to know you. The fellowship of your sufferings. To know Jesus and to know him crucified. God, truly, that is our heart. May you align our hearts with your heart. Right now, as the worship team prepares for a final song, I want you just to, I want you just to pray. I want you to seek him. And, if, and if, as I went through that list, if there are things that we talked about that got you a little bit nervous, recognize that that's an area that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you and say, you're trusting in something else. You're putting your hope in something other than Jesus. And you need to find healing. You need to find healing. That area of your life where you're looking to feel good, it's because you haven't dealt with the past. You haven't dealt with that area in your heart where, where you were hurt. And God says, I want to minister to you in that area so that you're no longer feeling that that's your reason to come. Just as the word of God says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you delight yourself in Jesus, he'll give you Jesus. Not what you want. He will give you Jesus. Delight yourself in Jesus and he'll give you Jesus. Seek the Lord.